What's going on, Shooms? Pseudo Catalyst here, broadcasting to you once again from my subterranean lair. <laughs> Today, we're diving into the world of the Raspberry Pi 4, and this is the first entry into a mini series where we get an AI model running on the Pi. If you are wondering what exactly this thing is, Think of it as a tiny computer that's more powerful than your grandma's old desktop, but small enough to lose in your couch cushions. So, let's get started. So first up, we have the heart of our project, the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. This powerful little board features a quad-core 64-bit Cortex A72 processor running at 1.5 gigahertz, four gigabytes of RAM, dual display support, up to 4K resolution on its micro HDMI, and a gigabit of ethernet. It's perfect for a wide range of applications from simple hobby projects to more complex computing tasks. And let's be honest, it's like having a robot's brain stem right in your hand. What the f Next, we'll be adding the Pi Sugar S Plus. This is a portable 5,000 milliamp hour UPS lithium battery powered module. This module is designed specifically for the Raspberry Pi and it ensures a stable power supply even when you're on the go. It's really great for projects that require you to not be tethered to your PC or a wall outlet. It also includes a smart power management system, allowing for easy control and monitoring of the power status, which really is a game changer for portable projects. You can kind of think of it as the arc reactor for your Pi. To keep our Raspberry Pi cool and running efficiently, we'll be installing the Armor Light heatsink with PWM fan, model ZP0110. This all-in-one solution combines a robust aluminum heatsink with a PWM-controlled fan, providing excellent heat dissipation. The fan speeds adjust automatically based on the temperature, ensuring optimal cooling performance while minimizing noise. It's kind of like a little window AC unit bolted right to your Raspberry Pi. Additionally, we'll be using the SanDisk Extreme 256 gigabyte micro SD card to store our operating system and files. This high capacity card offers fast read speeds of up to 160 megabytes a second and write speeds of up to 90 megabytes a second, making it perfect for running applications and handling large files. With its A2 rating, it also ensures faster app performance, which is crucial for a smooth user experience on the Raspberry Pi. First, let's power up the Pi with our Pi Sugar S Plus. This is like slotting a cyber deck into your neuro port, precise and clean. Get it right, and you'll be jacking into the net, or at least SSHing into your Pi in no time. So the Pi Sugar comes with four little threaded nuts here and it fits to the bottom of the Pi on the underbelly of the GPIO pins here. You're going to want to line up these little plastic washers here to the threaded nuts. Also you'll notice down here there are these brass pins with divots in them that you seat the bottom pins of the GPIO onto like that. So just make sure they're connected and as they sit there, we're going to screw in two screws. We're going to be using two M2.5 screws. They are six millimeters. And we're just going to screw in the Pi right here. The reason we're using these specific two uh, threaded nuts for the pies because the fan uses the other two and There you go, that's the uh, pie sugar connected Let's talk about cooling if your pie gets hotter than a jalapeno at a summer barbecue It might start throttling get yourself 
a nice little fan, or if you're feeling fancy a heatsink, and your pie will thank you by not becoming a very small and disappointing space heater. To get our fan seated, it has this divot here that lines up with these GPIO pins, and these GPIO, GPIO wires that line up with these pins here. Uh, there are two holes to screw in here, and it sort of fits on like that. Uh, additionally, you'll notice that there are these squares that line up perfectly with the chips on the Raspberry Pi. And those are milled that way so that these nice slices of bologna can fit on these chips. And we can create a nice tech sandwich. Have my bologna slices fitted here. We're going to make a sandwich. Warning, do not put sandwich meats on your technology. So we're just gonna line up the bologna with the fan and gently we're just gonna press down on it. Not too firm. I'm just gonna make sure those holes are lined up. We're gonna be using, again, M2.5 screws, but at 12 and 10 millimeters. The 12 millimeter screw is going to be screwed in here. Uh, and the reason why it is 12 millimeter is there is a gap uh, created by the brass pins and the underbelly of the GPIO pins. I'm just screwing in the 10 millimeter here. And that is the fan properly seated. We just have to plug in these GPIO wires here. Luckily, we have some documentation to help guide us here. You can see there's the power of the ground and the data cable there. So I'm just gonna plug those in. And there we go. We'll check that with the documentation. It looks right to me. And there is your hardware pretty much completely set up for now. Now, let's tackle OS installation. If you felt like this whole process so far is as complex as disarming a bomb, relax. This isn't Mission Impossible. Just download the Raspberry Pi OS, flash it to the card, and you're 90% of the way there. It's simpler than stepping in sketch. So here we have the Raspberry Pi website. You can see the link up here. You're specifically going to want to go to the software section. And here you will find the different downloads for your different operating systems. Uh, I'm using a Windows machine right now, so we're going to use Windows. You can see here, Imager 1.8.5. I've already downloaded that in my downloads. But if you haven't done that, you're just going to want to select save. We're going to open it up wherever we've saved this file. We're just following prompts here. Don't mind the black screen. And here we have the setup. And that will bring us into this menu here where we can select our device, our OS, and where we store the SD. We're using the Raspberry Pi 4. I want to run the 64-bit. And of course, we're going to choose the storage of wherever our micro SD is located. That is the E drive that we have here. these if you like. We're just going to let it download.
All right, and uh, once you've downloaded it, it just automatically ejects it for you, so you're good to go. So now that we have our micro SD formatted, we can slot it into our Raspberry Pi. Uh, the particular slot where we want to put the SD in is on the Raspberry Pi, but on the underbelly of it, as you can see right there. We're gonna wanna put the gold bit facing the sky, and it slots in just like that. So now that we have our Pi powered and formatted, we need to attach the peripherals here. My mouse is already connected to my keyboard, so I just have to plug in my keyboard. And I also have an HDMI to micro HDMI cable, where I can connect this screen here. this thing on and you're going to face a couple reboot screens you know it's just gonna load up with its colors here and you may see this screen a couple times as I said it's gonna go through a couple reboots So then it'll present to you this sort of menu labyrinth that we got to explore here. And really it's just following the, you know, setting settings for yourself. Uh, I don't really need to, I, I don't feel the need to guide you through this. It's location and time, setting up an account and a password. Now that we have set up all of the settings in the maze labyrinth, we're here in our desktop environment. You can see here we have the programming. Up first, we have some IDEs in there. It's really nice. Internet, sound and video, graphics, accessories. Uh, here you will find your file manager, which you can also find up top, and your terminal and your task manager. All these are pretty important. Just have some nice information and resources here. Some more settings. And your run and your logout, of course. internet access so I, I downloaded the chromium browser it also comes with a firefox browser i think i have both but defaults chromium this will be familiar to anyone who's ever used a computer you have your file manager here course you have your terminal we're gonna be doing a little bit of work with this in the next episode and I'll just up update here a little bit Ooh, hacker look at that I hacked into the mainframe guys anyway so that's just the desktop environment very simple very familiar so now we are on our desktop environment. As we covered previously, we can access settings, files, internet. We can use the pre-installed IDEs. And we can access the terminal. But this is all I have for you today, guys. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to use SSH and VNC to control the Raspberry Pi and get into the desktop environment through our phone to use our phone like this screen here thank you for watching and i'll catch you in the next one